you looking for a Linux distribution that gives you more desktop options than anything that's out there today? Well then look no further. Hybrid Fusion just released and we're going to look at that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Hybrid Linux brings an interesting concept to the table. This Linux distribution will allow you to be able to try out several different types of desktops in your in this Linux system without having to reboot your computer. You can get this distribution here at hybride.org. Now their servers are a little bit bogged down right now so expect some long download times. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at this. I've got this running in VirtualBox. This took me about two hours to install this thing. It was kind of, yeah, a little tough getting this in, but I wanted to give you guys the full desktop experience because when I was running this in live mode, it was extremely buggy. If I resized the windows, there would be artifacts all over the screen. It was kind of nutsy to look at. Okay, so you can Click this button here to get your desktop session, and you will see there are tons of them. The only problem is when I use my up and down arrows on the keyboard, I'm unable to choose which one. The list is so long, I can't move that around. So that's a tip for the developer if you're watching this. That's something you could possibly fix. But the thing is, most of you are going to interact with this using its new desktop called HiDV1 as its default. Okay, so let me go ahead and put in my password, and you can have a look at this new desktop. You are greeted with this screen every time you log in, uh, the concept uh, HiDV1. And um, only the license on this is in English. I wish there was a way that you could shut this off, but I haven't been able to find that just yet. Now, you'll see there's a button on the left here, and this is where you can launch applications. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For instance, you click the Applications button here, and you select a category, and then you can press the plus button here, and it will add that icon to the left panel here so that you can quickly access it and launch it. And you can easily remove these icons by right-clicking on them, like I just did. Now, additionally, you have a way to navigate your system by using this icon on the lower right side of the panel. You can access your desktop download folders, templates, uh, public folder, that sort of thing from right here. So these are just your personal folders, but you also have an application manager that you can launch here. And what this will allow you to do is you can filter out programs from this menu here. So if there's an icon, uh, an item that you're not going to be using on your system, you can uncheck that. So let's say I'll Riot Solitaire, Solitaire I don't want in the menu. I can uncheck this. And then when I go into the application menu under games, it is not listed here. But let's say I want to put it back. If I add the check mark here, and go back to the games menu, you will see it is not listed at the very top, but actually, hold on, let me get that in focus again, it's on the bottom, if it will let me access. <laughs> see, it put it on the bottom. So you can see this is behaving a little buggy, uh, but not quite as buggy as I did when I was running this in live mode. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. Uh, and also, the Infos button brings up that adorable French screen that we just can't seem to get rid of every time we log into the computer. I'm sure there is a way. Now, uh, before we activate Hybrid, I want to show you Magic, which is located here. And this is another way to interact and get programs on your system. Uh, there's an option to close it. If you click the SYS button, this will show you the amount of RAM that you have used right now and uh, what your CPUs are doing. Interesting feature. And then in the Apps button here, you have another way to find applications. The icons in this are rather ugly, though. 
Um, so it'd be very interesting to find a way to change themes. But um, so you have your uh, links to accessories. And as you can see here, you've got three calculators. And some of you are asking, well, why would I need to have three calculators? Well, each of these desktops have their own calculator. KDE has its own. GNOME has its own. And obviously, uh, this is for better integration. If you press the calculator button on your keyboard, uh, that desktop environment will launch its calculator. That sort of thing. So, and that's, and I think these are all kind of dependencies of each desktop. So that's why they're in here. Some of you say bloated. I will have to agree. All right. All of your games are listed here. A huge collection of them. By the way, this distro was 1.7 gigs. So expect to have a lot included with this. Your graphics tools are located here. All of your favorites uh, are included. You uh, get uh, the GIMP, um, the Eye of Mate. Let me see what else this has. A Gwen View, Image Magic. Okay, you have a uh, OCam also is installed in this. Cool. Okay, you have a digital painting program, and I was just curious to see if uh, Inkscape was in here, but it's not. Okay, no problem. And then of course you can press the close button here, and that will bring you back to the clock. Close button here will close Magic. All right, now let's get to the meat and potatoes of this hybrid. All right, now, when you click the options on here, you can decide where you want the hybrid panel to be. Maybe we want this on the center and on the top. Great place to put it, but then again, it puts that useless panel in another place. There's just no way to get rid of this panel, and it would be great to have this moved somewhere else. All right, uh, let me go ahead and put that back in its default location. Okay, and then we'll click hybrid again and press return. Here is your choice for desktops now. Now, the nice thing about this is you can check these desktops without logging out of your system and logging back in. How cool is that? We'll start off with Enlightenment 17. And, of course, you are greeted with its configuration utility. Now, I don't know why it's doing this because I had already set this up the last time I used this when I installed it. And it wants me to... Um, reconfigure that again. So apparently it's not really saving any settings. Okay, and then we get another error message. And this has happened every time I've launched E17 on this. Uh, no, I don't want to unload the module, but you have a fully functional E17. Click anywhere on the desktop to access your menus, all the eye candies there, and a bunch of applications and bloatware, enough to uh, appease just about anybody here. Okay, and you'll notice there's an icon right here. This will take you back. All right, and uh, back into hybrid now, and uh, let's have a look at GNOME 3. This time the icon is positioned here. Okay, and then after waiting a minute for this to load, uh, we have our GNOME desktop. And let's try and... Ugh! What is this? Okay, let's just get out of that altogether. Okay, well, it didn't like GNOME 3 very well, that's for sure. Okay, let's go into Hybrid and try out regular GNOME. Okay. And it looks like regular GNOME to me. No desktop, though. Let me see what it's got for a desktop. Well, no right-clicking on the desktop. So I can't change the wallpaper on this. Uh, okay, now, uh, how do I go back to, uh, <laughs> how do I go back to the, uh, uh, the hyper desktop now? Uh. Okay, this is weird, because now we don't have a way to get back. Well, I suppose I could log out. Ah, and it took me back to the hybrid desktop. Okay. Hybrid, let's try KDE now. Okay, we are in the KDE desktop now. Let's have a look at this and see what we get. All right, this looks like it's functioning.
I will admit, slow. Ah, it looks like they have K-Win running on top of this as well. Huh. Okay, let's find out. More actions. And window manager settings. <laughs> okay, yep. It's got effects and working and zip bada boom. Very nice. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so let's try something fun here. Yeah, saying that some effects could not be loaded. Well, it is what it is. Okay. All right, but it looks like... Uh, all right, so this looks like a newer version of KDE2. And let's do LXDE now. Okay, are we working? All right, not too bad. Gives you options. Ah, desktop preferences. No wallpaper. Hmm. Hmm, it doesn't even take... <laughs> okay. I'm not even about to go hunting it down. Let's get out of this one. Okay, this one is open box. I like open box. Nice and lightweight. And here we are, open box. Okay, cool. All right, applications and games, a nice little... All right, cool. Back to the hybrid menu, and let's look at Unity now. Everybody's favorite. Everybody loves Unity. Unity! It wouldn't be a distro without Unity. I notice I have to click the button about five, ten times to get half of these things to launch. Uh, as Total OS today would say, buggy, buggy, horse stable. <laughs> well, it appears Unity isn't going to run for me. It has completely crashed. <laughs> Let's restart this virtual machine. Now, something I will admit, while I was spending my time getting accustomed with this operating system. I didn't get a chance to try all of the desktops. I just picked a few of them and they seemed to work okay. And so, uh, and I, Unity was one I didn't look at. And so, apparently, uh, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't like my uh, installation here. Okay, back to hybrid, and this time let's try FVWM. Ooh, that looks nice. Cool. Oh, right-clicking on the desktop opens new terminals. Ah, and so to close these, you have to right-click on them. Gotcha. Okay. I've never tried FBWM, so... All right, so left-clicking on the desktop. What does that do? How about middle-clicking? Hmm. Okay. Well, we've got a menu here, I think. Okay, cool. Never tried this one. But, all right. Ah, different desktops, maybe? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Intriguing. And it looks like it has tint down here. All right. At least we know that one works. Okay, back in the hybrid. And then we have my desktop that I'm using, XFCE. Okay, nice. Got a nice XFCE desktop. Very good. And uh, a little dock here which is also part one of one of its panels. Very nice. Okay. So this looks usable. Okay, and then this comes with Mate. 
Okay, and even this looks all right. All right, so that looks like a working system. And then finally, in the lineup on hybrid, we've got cinnamon. Hmm, weird. Looks like this doesn't like cinnamon either. Yeah. That or I didn't wait long enough for it to load. Try that again. Uh, my verdict is it does not like cinnamon either. It doesn't look like it's going to let me out this time. Bottom line, the developer's website makes it vehemently clear that this is a concept. So I didn't expect this distribution to be working 100%. I knew I'd probably run into a few flaws here and there. Would I recommend this distribution for installation on your home computer? Absolutely not. But what I would recommend is that if you do not know what kind of a desktop that you would like to use and you're considering using Linux, download this ISO image, burn it to disk, run it in live CD mode on actual hardware, and then you can try out all of the desktops and then pick out a distribution that already has that built into it. For example, let's say that you like the Cinnamon desktop. Well, you can go to linuxmint.com and get their distribution. They already have Cinnamon. Or if you like KDE, you could download Kubuntu or Linux Mint with KDE. And something else I would like to mention, I'd like to give the developer kudos on his wonderful high d v1 desktop i think this has great potential and i think the developer should focus on improving this rather than just piling up so many operating systems into one distribution it just doesn't make sense mm -hmm.